It is so wonderful that you've joined me, Sister Modupe, for the Sister Modupe's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show. And you know what we say here, we're learning how to be nutritionally optimized from the tip of our head to the tip of our toes, okay? That means physically, with the food you eat, supplements you take, that means emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, we cover it all here, okay? So, I know you're wondering. Now, what does that song have to do with what we're going to cover today? Well, mean green, right? Money. So, so many people's minds on green money. But I'm telling you, you need to have your mind on green food. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. about why today. It is so very important to make sure to get your greens in. Right. All the other food colors, too, but your plate should be mostly green most of the time, okay? Everything else should be like a lawn with a few decorations on it. So, why? Minerals. Minerals is one of the big reasons why. And the body needs at least 60 a day. Yeah, I did say 60 a day. Remember, you're from the earth, okay? Well, the earth has actually more minerals than that. Right now, scientifically, they're saying that we understand we need at least 60, at least some scientists now, right? Your doctor might tell you, oh, you need 5, 10, 15, 20, but you believe you me, you need 60. Look it up, okay? Now, why? Why do we need these things? Why do we need minerals? Why do we need vitamins? Why do we need uh, essential fatty acids and all the other stuff our body needs? Because our body's doing a lot of things. That's why. So when you look at all the things the body is doing, it's like a manufacturing plant, right? It has waste disposal facilities. It has to be irrigated. It has to be aerated, okay? So check all that out. We've got a lot of things going on in this magnificent machine called a body, right? Because we're not these bodies. We, these are just vehicles or vessels for our spirit, our soul, our light, whatever you want to call it. But we have to take care of them. And that means not treating them like a trash dump, right? You got to be very, very aware of what you put in. It's like a car. If a car is manufactured and it says only use premium fuel, what happens when you don't use premium fuel? That's right. It starts to malfunction or it might even stop running altogether. Okay, well, that's not the way to be optimized. That's not to be a way to be your best, feel your best, look your best, okay? And that's what we're talking about, being optimized all the time. I wanted to read a little something to you from this particular book. Picked it up at a show and a natural products expo. And uh, I found some good information in here. Mm -hmm. That's the librarian in me. I'm picking up information all the time because I like to be informed and I love to share it with you, okay? So one of the things it says in this book, it's a glossy page, so I'm going to put some help on today. It says that um, a, a good strategy to use is to use food or nutritional supplements as uh, natural products to increase the expression of weak genes or whatever is weakened or needs to be repaired in your body, okay? So that you, you'll function at your highest potential. The genes will function at the highest potential and operate at normal or health supporting level instead of lower problem, uh, problematic levels. We don't want to go around with learning how to manage illness or disease or imbalance. We want to be balanced. We want to be optimized. We want to be the best we can be, right? So through food extracts and compounds, we can literally instruct our bodies, right? Hey, let's be the mistress and master of our own universe, our own bodies, our own core, our own destiny, right? So we want to communicate that to our body and take a proactive, health-promoting role in our own well-being. Did you hear that? Proactive. That means you don't leave it up to a clown at some place called Mickey D's to tell you what to eat, right? And you don't want to be going to a doctor and saying, okay, well, whatever you say. You've got to be in charge of your life and your, your lifestyle and your how much vitality and energy and all of that in your life. You get to choose that. You can either choose to be vibrating really high or you can choose to be vibrating very low. And a lot has to do what you choose to put on that plate, put in your mouth, drink, etc. Okay? So, they continue here to say, 
that we're going to communicate with our bodies, right? In this way, we can use food or nutritional compounds to act as information to communicate directly to our bodies. We can literally instruct our genes to produce healthy outcomes. Now, how many of you are thinking about a healthy outcome when you're eating the ribs, that fried chicken, that pizza? Does that even seem to equate with a healthy outcome, right? And you say, oh, I'm going to do it today, but tomorrow I'm going to have some salad or some fruit or whatever. But you have to realize that's the uh, fuel, that's the raw material you've given your body to work on. Now, what would be greater op uh, um, uh, options. Just think of the difference between how your body is going to react, what kind of fuel, what kind of uh, raw materials you're giving your body versus a hamburger to an apple, a pear, some watermelon, right? Okay, your body's like, bring it on, bring it on. Sometimes you eat that other stuff. you even saying before you eat it, oh, I know I shouldn't eat this. <laughs> but you eat it anyway. And then you're not feeling optimized. You're not feeling great. You're reading the novel in the bathroom, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's not a good way to treat our bodies. It's not even, we don't even want to keep having those battles with our mind, right? I know I shouldn't eat it, but I'm going to eat it anyway. Okay, what, what are you telling yourself? What are you saying your life is worth? It is so easy to increase include more fresh, live, real food so that your body has real fuel, right? Okay, so our roles as active participants, remember, active participant, this is your life. Be an active participant in your health, in our long-term well-being is to organize our environments, the way we eat, and nutritional supplements, re supplemental re regimes, to send messages to our genes that are healthful, healthful, full of health, non-inflammatory, i.e. aches and pains. No, don't want achy and painness, and we don't want to learn how to manage it. We don't want to know how to not have it. Be proactive, prevent, not look for a cure, prevent, understand the, re the source of the issue. And non-stress inducing, right? Drama doesn't help anybody's life. It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't send positive signals to the body to be healthy, to be full of energy. All of that drama, drama, stress is not something you want to look for. You always want to understand how to reduce it, okay, because that is very good for the body. You know, you actually have stress responses in the body. And no, I'm not just talking about that headache you get, <laughs> okay? That's a sign. That's one of the stress-related um, consequences, okay? But there are others, like uh, restriction of blood vessels, which actually is what leads a lot to the uh, headaches where the blood vessels get very, very small, now that blood is pumping hard, trying to get there, and it causes aches and pains or inflammation from uh, running to eat that gallon of ice cream, and you know you can't even eat a tablespoon without gas and other problems. We don't want to be eating to uh, resolve emotional issues. We don't want to be hollering and screaming, trying to resolve something. Those are That's very stressful on the body, and there are a lot of very... Um, uh, responses that the body will make that are very damaging to the body. Like some people, you know, they'll have heart pains in their chest, right? Uh, that's not good. Some people, their digestion won't function properly, okay? So those are things that we are talking about avoiding and feeding the body properly so that we can be our best selves, all right? So a couple of other things that this particular article had. Look at the title there. Mm-hmm. Beyond basic nutrition, okay? Beyond basic nutrition, teaching your body to be healthy. Teaching your body. You know where it really starts is starting with that mind, making those decisions that the habits that don't serve us are the ones that we're going to get rid of. And, for example, instead of grabbing that burger, we start grabbing a very, very green salad. Or we grab a bowl full of fruit. Or we have a drink, a glass or two of water. Because oftentimes people are thirsty and they think they're hungry. 
So they keep eating. Now they haven't given the body enough water to even help deal with the uh, <laughs> so-called food that they've put in their mouth. And of course, I'm not talking about drinking while you're eating, but you do have to drink before, drink a right, the right amount of time afterwards so that you can help with your digestion, your irrigation, so to speak, your waste elimination, all of that. Water is very, very important, okay? So here, now it says, Although natural compounds, and this is part of um, this thing about the green money, because uh, you know some people out here they're they're not they're serving you up on a platter, shaking you out, shaking you down, giving you all these medications and such, when that's not helping you to feel better. Listen to this: Although natural compounds can be very biologically active, right? Herbs, things like that, most are not powerful enough to throw off the delicate balance of our body's integrated functions, right? Our body works together. The left hand, the right hand need to know what they're doing, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidney, that's all working together to keep us alive and healthy. But we want to make sure, again, that the raw materials we give the body are those that help it to function. So this is in sharp contrast to artificial chemicals which are so strong they can spread imbalances throughout our bodies. A lot of us are getting the messages. I have people often come to me for consultations. They're like, the doctor's trying to put me on this medication. What can I do to eat better to avoid this? The do I'm on this medication. I've been on it for years. What can I do to get off of this medication? Because it causes imbalances in the body. And, you know, hey, that's your finances too, <laughs> okay? All right, one more thing, one more point from this particular piece of uh, publication. Yet many of us do not obtain the natural benefits of how, uh, that we should from our foods from the way we eat. The food industry's desire to achieve convenience, shelf stability, and high profits. Ah, there goes something about that mean green money, right? High profits. Not. Did you hear anything about nutrition in there? Not a thing. Okay, so they have um, put all these other things in front to achieve convenience, shelf stability. They'll put all kinds of preservatives in there to make it sit on the shelf forever, right? And high profits. Sugar, salt, those are cheap things. So they put lots of those in those foods to addict you, to uh, uh, make you want those tastes when it has nothing to do with keeping your body healthy. All right. So uh, let's see, high profits. And so they do, uh, do that. So you have very processed and refined foods. And these po foods are processed and refined to the point of stripping them of many vital nutrient compounds. Remember a long time ago I said, if it's not nutritious, why are you putting it in your mouth? <laughs> it's just gonna clog you, it's going to cause weight gain, it's gonna cause dis-ease, illness. It's not any good for you. So let's think about and reassess why we eat and what we need to keep this body strong and healthy and being able to live our best lives. Okay, one last sentence here. This has had unintended consequences. Eating all this stuff they call food, I say they call it stuff they call food. They say it's food stuff. I say it's stuff they call food. Unintended consequences. They say it's unintended, but sometimes I wonder because a lot of times the people who own the big uh, agri-industry, they also own the big pharmaceuticals. They have uh, shares in the hospitals and the medications, all of that. It's all all connected, so if they can get you sick, get you in one part of the cycle, they can have you in the whole thing, right? So this has been very costly to our long-term health, okay? And I don't know about you, but high health is what, like my highest pri uh, priority, because what is wealth without health, right? That's got to be your first priority, because how can you live a successful, highly productive life without health? Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of these charts here. They talk about looking at uh, how chimpanzees, which are can be stronger than men, very lean, very active. Let's look and see the difference between how we eat one to the other, all right? All right, so the wild chimpanzee diet, or live it, I like to say live it, Look how many greens and blossoms they eat, the percentage. If you look between the fruit and the greens and blossoms, and then the other is what, bark, seeds, pith from the seeds, or the skin inside the fruit, the pith, that's what that is, the P-I-T-H, 
it's it's like 90 over 90 percent of the the way they eat and uh wow they're out there healthy and doing their thing and here we are with heart disease cholesterol problems liver kidney all our organs giving out come on now let's make sure we're eating so it supports the lifestyle and our health all right so you see the standard american diet and some people call it the sad diet (laughs) sad you'll see look at all the rice the potatoes the bread pasta that's a lot of food that doesn't have very much nutrition but you know what it's really good at doing helping you gain a ton of weight that's right helping you gain a ton of weight clogging you up uh, making it impossible for the little nutrition that's in some of the foods to get out to the body because your intestinal tract is all clogged up you know pasta in Italian means glue that's right glue and that's essentially what it does to your intestinal tract let's look at the charts again okay now if you look again at the wild chimpanzee diet the two charts on the bottom and look at the typical raw foodist diet you'll see that even there we don't oftentimes include as many greens as we need to and that's a problem I'm going to show you why because I'm going to show you what the power and the beauty and benefit of greens now think about elephants think about horses huge animals so strong a lot of muscle and what do they eat all day huh they out there grazing on grass and leaves and things like that come on now let's get some clues from nature I know everybody's not going to become vegan, vegan or vegetarian or raw, a raw food person, but obviously there's the need to include more raw, live, fresh food. Even the guys in the white lab coats are even saying that. Even the doctors now are saying that. They're not telling you to exclude some of the things you need to exclude, but they're at least talking about including some more, more nutritious foods. Okay, so let's look at the next uh, link we've got to share today. Okay. All right, we're going to make it larger. One of the big things, one of the, uh, oh, this was an article in the Wall Street, I'm sorry, New York Times, and they were talking about the Atkins diet, and maybe it needed to, um, uh, that it was similar to the, what the gorillas eat or whatever. And it's like, oh, come on now, y'all got that all wrong. They talk about uh, the need for protein, and people, I I had another show and talked about this. First of all, plants are complete in their protein profile. They they completely contain the proteins that our body can't make. So that means they're complete in that for what we need. We eat certain amino acids, and we make the others that uh, are not in the foods and so that's what it makes complete for us. Now they talked about gorillas and the fact that gorillas eat mostly leaves and the fact that they have a lot of muscle. When, when their fruit is not available or in season for the gorillas, there's all these greens. Look at what it says here about spinach. Spinach is 49% protein. 49% protein. Look at kale, 45. Broccoli's 45. Lettuce, the dark le- leaf lettuce. 34% protein, Chinese cabbage, 34% protein, and so forth. So eating the greens means that you're going to get all the protein that you need. As a matter of fact, in America, people are eating way more protein than they need, and it's causing health problems. That's right. When you eat too much, it causes a problem with the body. Think about a child who a baby's born, right? Let's say they're being nursed by a mom for six months, nine months, whatever. All they're doing is having uh, breast milk most of the time, right? That's 6% protein. Now, if a little baby can grow into a small child on and on, set a good foundation for building a healthy body on 6% protein, don't you think 30-some percent protein sounds ridiculous for an adult who, especially in our setting, is not lifting, walking, building uh, working hard. Most of us are just sitting now. We don't walk very far, etc. It's way too much protein, and that is the cause of a lot of health problems in America. Way too much protein, way too much carbohydrate. You know what, t- what happens with all that excess protein you eat? It turns into fat. That's right. It turns into fat. So let's 
be analytical about what we eat and realize that green, 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 mm -hmm. not only makes you clean inside, makes you strong and healthy and provides the body with really good raw materials to build, maintain, heal, repair, okay? So huh, where do you get your protein? I tell people I get my protein from living foods. That's right, living foods, greens and fruits and nuts and seeds, things like that. So let's go on to the next. All right, next link. <laughs> so as we're getting to the next link, you know, people like to often tell me that, uh, well, you know, vegetarian vegans, they're not healthy. I say, well, if they're not eating properly as a vegan or vegetarian, yes, they're not going to be healthy. But, but, but know that the big majority of people in this society are not vegans and vegetarians. But so who's filling up all these hospitals? I always tell people we should not be celebrating another hospital opening. We should be celebrating if a hospital closes, right? People are all happy. Oh, we got another 500 bed hospital. You don't want hospitals. You want the hospitals to be closed, and you want doctors to be saying, "I don't, I can't get enough patients." So I guess I'm going to go and do something else. That we want society to be getting healthier, not sicker. Okay, so now let's. This is one of the reasons. Well, again, now we see that protein, no problem in greens, right? Let's look at the omega, uh, omega fatty acids. There's omega threes and omega sixes in America in, in, uh, in industrialized societies. There's way too much omega-6 that people are consuming per day. So if you look at something like uh, sesame oil, okay, let me explain. So omega-3, omega-6s, you need both of them, okay? You need both of them, but your body does not make them. So you have to eat foods that have these fats. And fats, what do fats do for the body? They're only super important, like minerals and vitamins. So fats, your brain is mostly fat. Your skin has to have fat in it to be supple and soft, okay? So those are just two, your, all of your tissues in your body have to have fats in them because why? They're not rigid like rocks or wood. They have to be soft and supple, okay? So fats are very important in structurally and also metabolically in the body, okay? So three, omega-6 and three should be either a one-to-one -one ratio or six slightly higher than three, like maybe a one to two ratio. But look at something like uh, safflower oil. 10,000 milligrams to zero, uh, 10,000 omega-6 to zero omega-3. That is way out of balance. And eating that way causes a lot of damage to the heart and other parts of the body right? Because you're not getting the right kind of fats. It also contributes to things like uh, diabetes in the sense that the cell membrane of each of your trillion, trillion, trillion cells, fats are very important to making up that wall, that membrane around each cell. Well, just imagine if that wall is not, that membrane is not in good condition. Oh, you're in so much trouble because, uh, not that you can't turn it around, but what's happening is now that membrane is the gateway. Cell, things have to come into the cell, like glucose that the food is broken down in the body into. It's got to come out of the, be moved out of the blood into the cell. If it can't come into the cell, you'll be very tired. The, that sugar, that I'm sorry, that glucose in the blood is going to cause damage in the body while it's sitting in the blood. So people who take their readings, you know, prick the finger, oh my gosh, I'm at 600, I'm about to go into a diabetic coma. If I have all this glucose, this energy in my blood, why am I tired? Well, that's because the cell walls are not in good shape and it can't be removed from the blood into the cells, okay? So that's just one reason, one way that those essential fatty acids are so, so important. People die dementia and Alzheimer's and things like that, not enough healthy fats for the brain. Your brain is mostly fat. Cholesterol is a type of fat. The body makes cholesterol, and cholesterol is very important in the body, but when it's being manufactured over time, overdrive, that's when you have a problem. But it's a very important component in the body. Guess what? All your hormones, the basis of your hormones is cholesterol. Mm-hmm. So when men go on those cholesterol-lowering drugs, 
there's no more action saw for the border because their hormones are jacked up and circulation and all of that type of thing. So let's see. Let's find out of these uh, sources of good fats, at least you thought they were, what, uh, which one has a really good ratio for the body? So let's see. Walnuts, let's see. 4.2 times more omega-6s than threes. Uh, not as bad as 10,000, but that's not the best. Look down at that green leaf. Look at that spinach, and the other greens are going to be similar, right? 5.3 times more omega-3s than sixes, right? Now that's great. That's good news, because particularly because we are in a society where people get way too many omega-6s from eating too much sunflower oil, because a lot of things are processed with sunflower oil, fried in sunflower oil, or, or a lot of the processed foods on the shelf are, and uh, uh, con uh, things like that. So we have to think about the balance. Not only do we need to know which materials are good for the body to run on. We have to make sure that we have the ones that are in a good balance. So you can't just say any oil or any fat because some have a very, very different profile from others. Okay, so that's two reasons I've told you, shown you that greens are really, really good for you. The protein, quote unquote, the essential fatty acids, all right? So let's move on to the next one. I bet you didn't really think about fats being an important part in green leafy vegetables. All right, so now, everybody's always talking about the need for calcium in the body. Ooh, did you drink your milk today? Okay, so what we're finding out is that calcium supplements have been linked to lower death risk for women. That's right, mm-hmm. But it's very important you have the right form of calcium. A lot of people, I've had two women tell me that they were taking the wrong form of calcium and they ended up with some, hard, uh, some hardening of their uh, vessels around their heart. We have a client now that we're going to be dealing with, with uh, getting him some longevity supplements because he has some hardening around his heart and is a very serious but not something you can't turn around. But the body needs the right ma raw materials to maintain and repair the body. And again, just think about it. Is a fish sandwich probably going to do, a fried fish sandwich going to do the body any as good as a spinach salad or a kale salad? So no, people are not all going to change totally how they eat. Everybody's not going to become vegan and raw vegan and all of that. But I tell you what, you need to up, up, up that quantity of raw, fresh foods. And a big majority of that needs to be greens. Again, look at nature, horses. Elephants, other animals, chimpanzee, gorillas, fruit and green leafy things are the majority of the food they eat. They're, they're trim, they're slim, they're strong. Mm-hmm. Oh, gee, don't those sound like qualities you like in your life? To be trim. And I know everybody's not going to be a size three or five. I'm not a size three or five. The thing is not everybody be a certain super small size. The thing is that you're healthy. Mm -hmm. Your knees don't hurt you when you move. You can get up and walk some stairs or walk around the block without pain and, and, and that you've got enough breath, that you're keeping your organs he healthy. Excess weight on organs, it, you know, that excess uh, fat, it is actually mashing organs, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you're not eating the right kinds of food to keep your intestinal tract cleared, you become very toxic. So anyway, get those greens in. Let me give you a quick recipe for a quick smoothie. Get some, uh, some nut milk of your choice, banana, some spinach, and throw one tropical fruit in there. Don't go putting six or seven fruits in your smoothie. That's too much fruit, too much sugar. Throw in uh, some pineapple if you eat pineapple. Mangoes are phenomenal. And a little cinnamon. Don't go crazy with the sugar. You don't have to go crazy with the calories. Get those greens in, delicious and so good for you. Let's make all of us, let's make our goals to be nutritionally optimized so that we can feel really good, be our best, and be able to offer that to the world. Mm, I 
That's what we're sent here for, create and share. Well, I've loved sharing this with you today. Don't forget our sponsors. We just love that they help us with uh, make sure to put on this show, All in One Press Kit. Go to rawveganSoulFood.com and take a look at my press kit or my gateway to the social media and mm. videos and everything so that you can see how what a great package that is to be able to access everybody and everything. Okay, I'm so looking forward to seeing you next time. Try that smoothie recipe. And green smoothies, they're the bomb. Try and get one in every day and you'll feel so much better. I love you. Thank you. Come back and see us again. Sister Mo Dupoy's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show. Peace. Because I never know in the world that's going